Uh, welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. Why are you freaked out, Rex? <laughs> <laughs> there may or may not be a rattlesnake directly behind Rex. Yeah. It's moving. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, We're not kidding. We are not kidding. <laughs> it's about seven feet away. It is, and it's twitching. Oh, it's still twitching. It's still, yeah. Okay. Let's drink whiskey. <sighs> It is time for another donation cer- Hey, where's your, uh, where's your ceremonial garb? You got it. Huh. The hat? The hat? Of generosity. Of generosity. <laughs> and the wizardly robe of wizardly things. Yeah. Now, uh, this music today is a little more somber. Mm-hmm. It's from, uh, Patrick, what's his name? <laughs> How dare you! I actually wrote it down. You forgot the man's Patrick name. Patrick Proctor. He gives us... He's actually sending us some whiskey too because he's an amazing guy. But this is a video of him singing in the Miami choir. He's good. He's good. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Good. Now this is for... Wait, wait. This is for Will. <laughs> Thank you, William Sinclair. Ding! Thank you for the whiskey. William Sinclair sent four wee bottles of whiskey. No, oh, nice. Right? No. One each of the Glenmorangie Coors, like, Coors. So there's four. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Are we good had... with this? Can I take this down now? Yeah, I haven't had all four. Okay. Sorry, Proctor. You're being bumped. Can you do it? Oh, uh, nailed it. You did it. So we got the Quinta Rubin, we got the La Santa. We're starting with... We got... Don't get these out of order for me. It's the regular... Oh, Nectar. Nectar Door? Door? I don't know. <laughs> nectar. So this is, by the way, the original. Dude, you're just asking for it. I'm just living dangerously and that's you my motto. Are really... The original. Now you can buy this kit. I'm going to show you the box here in a second. The Nectar. The Nectar. Yeah. And... The La Santa, which we have actually tried on one of our episodes already. And then we, no, I think we tried the Quinta Rubin. Oh, did we? The port finish? Yes. Okay. I don't remember trying the La Santa. Maybe, oh, maybe it was the other way around. I, I'm, I'm having When a hard you have this much whiskey, yeah. it poisons your memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was it last week? I was like, oh yeah, we've, ne well, we've never reviewed that whiskey. We'll talk about it someday. And then I had like 15 people go, dude, that was episode 69. Right. I'm like, oh. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> yeah, I like the, the there's people in our audience that have seen more of our videos than I have. Okay, so we start with the original. Now the original, and by the way, this is the box. Yeah. William Sinclair's little note. Lovely Thank you, note. Sir. Thank you, William. And uh, it's a little box, comes with one of each. Yep. Now we're starting with the 10 year old. Oh, there's like a write up. Yeah, there's a write up. I want to know the nectar. Oh yeah, yeah, well we'll get to that one. Patience, my friend. Come on, come on. Patience. So this is cool. I've got a really cool story once we get through tasting these. Uh, That's right, taste for it. Um, and by the way, Katie requested that we do a nectar. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. so also for Katie. All right. Yeah. Okay, so this is their classic Glenmorangie tin. This is a Highland, some of the tallest stills in Scotland. Do you know they also own Ardbeg? Glenmorangie owns Ardbeg. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Now you said tallest stills. What, yeah. What does that have to do with it? Like what? So the taller a still, the usually the smoother mm. and prettier a whiskey. Um, what happens is the higher your reef before your reflux curve, the less of the meaty heavy stuff makes it through the top and over the other side. That's honey and flowers. Yeah, honey and flowers. I totally agree with that one. That, Apricot maybe. It's a nice breakfast whiskey. This is a Lasanta 12 year old. Okay. This is the sherry cask finish. Mm hmm. Ooh, yeah, instantly. And this is Pedro Jimenez. Oh, notice all the berry notes that get brought back in there. We get some uh, the get citrus and the honey subside a little bit. And then I'm getting a little bit more uh, butterscotch. Yeah, and there's more of the butterscotch and there's more fruit notes in there. That's a sherry every time, always does that. Now but, they're all a 12. Now between those two, what do you think? Uh, between the two, I think I prefer this one. It's a, it's Me too. A bit, it's a bit more smoother. Yeah, and the sherry is... Mm, it's got a little, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of sherry, but you guys already know that. Okay, we're gonna go straight to look at the color difference Quinta on Ruben. that. That port cask finish, right? So today's a grand experiment because I've gone no coffee, 
just whiskey. Yeah, me either. <laughs> haven't done anything else today. We'll, we'll see. You may watch this video back. Like, now this is God, Portuguese we're pork so cask. Sloppy. Man, that's just good. That that heads down the direction of Dalmore. As far as just rich, I'm getting yeah, I'm getting some rich butterscotch. On yeah, this. More so but, a bit more so than now. This. That one definitely has more of the plum notes. That's tasty, but that's a dessert right there. This the still the tin is a whiskey, this, right? The tin is just a scotch. I think this is a dessert. Beverage. The Glen Morangi samplings that we were that we're having. I think this is the front runner right now. Yeah, I, I haven't tried the nectar. It's not boring, it's not overly sweet, but it is very rich. It's more of a dessert whiskey category. All of these are very pretty, friendly whiskeys. And last, Katie, this is for you. Here it is. The Specifically. Nectar. The Nectar. The Nectar d'Or. Now this is based on Sauterne, and I'm pronouncing the French words incorrectly, but the Sauterne uh, Barriques from French vineyards. So, so remember what we learned of, um, Basically, it's just larger casks, Sauternes, yeah. Barrique casks, so wine casks. Rude. Ah! Oh, yeah, that's by far the mildest of all four. Even on the nose, it's it's really light and delicate. Mm -hmm. Almost like a white wine. I'm getting alcohol if I get in there really deep. Yeah, it's, it's, um, what's weird is, I'm going to come back to the tin now because I think, I may actually like the tin mm. best. The tin tastes the most like a Highland Scotch. Just a good Scotch. Everything else is definitely a specialty thing. I feel like I'm getting just the tiniest amount of cinnamon. Just the tiniest. Can we come back to that one? Tiniest amount. It's a drizzle on a dessert that I've had somewhere. Oh, it's a cream cheese frosting. Cream cheese frosting, okay. Like on a red velvet cupcake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Or a hot cross bun. Mm. Actually, that's not a bad comparison. If you've ever had a hot cross bun with cream cheese frosting, that one's not far off because it's got the bready you whiskey hand, notes. You hand me a recorder and I'll blow your mind with some hot cross bun. So I think if I was smoking a cigar, I'd be going for the Quinta Ruben all day. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Lasanta. I don't. I'm never a big fan of the Lasanta. The sherry finishes. I think of all of these, if I just wanted to get a damn good scotch, I would go back to the tin. I think it stood out to me. The uh, the nectar is. It's, the nectar's it's, too pretty. It's nuanced, it's light, it's delicate, and I feel like if I wasn't really sloppy tired, I'd be able to pick out some stuff. And but I am absolutely having to hunt. If you These like are, Japanese whiskey, you think? I think you would dig the nectar. Mm. It's it's in a similar category of the light, kind of light, sparkly, refreshing. It's a little sweeter than most of the Japanese whiskeys I've tried. Mm -hmm. I mean, just sugary is sweet. Glenn Moore, freaking Angie. All right. All right we got well, hot, hot dang. You want to hear my story about Glenn Rangy? <laughs> Only if it's good. It's good. So I was in a hotel in St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm, and it's in a conference that I don't want to be at. And there's a whole bunch of not my people around. And I'm wearing name tag thing. And I go into the elevator to go back up to my room. And I'm looking across and there's this older couple, kind of kindly older couple, standing together in the corner of the elevator and uh, it's sort of like huddled like tourists in the corner mm. and they both have their name look down at the name tag and name tag says where you're from theirs says Ross Shire Scotland mm. and I said Ross Shire Scotland huh and he says why yes and I said so uh McAllen and Glen Morangi huh and he goes oi how do you know about McAllen <laughs> I'm Glen Morangi and I'm like, well, you just stumbled into maybe the biggest Scotch whiskey fan in this hotel right now. And, uh, and he's like, well, you know, for multiple generations, my family has grown the barley for Glen Marangi. Wow. Right? So it turns out this guy has a farm. And if I remember correctly, it's called Ballantor yeah. Farms. And I'm probably getting that wrong because I'm going from memory. Um, anyway, so Glen Marangi gets their barley from a local co-op called like High Highland Grain Limited or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Highland Grain Limited or whoever they are, they sort barley from a bunch of different farmers in the area. Yeah. And this guy owns one of the farms. And he told the story, I can remember being a wee lad and and driving the tractor with all the, you know, pile up to the distillery. And when it was really cold, I'm freezing my nose off. And, 
and they'd give him a wee dram straight from clear spirit, straight from the still, and he's like, poof, just blow my top of my head off. Yeah, as I felt warm all the way home though. So, uh, so I was like, well, that's so cool. I shook his hand, and then they leave, and I realize as I what we both get off on the same floor. I realize. Um, they're staying like three doors down from me. So I immediately turn around and run downstairs out into the market two blocks down. Mm -hmm. I buy a bottle of Glenmorangie and a bottle of McAllen. Yeah. I come back to the hotel, I knock on their door <laughs> and the, the wife and she's like, hello? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I hope this isn't weird, but would you be willing to sign these two bottles of scotch? <laughs> and she goes, oh, this has never happened before. This is amazing. Oh, they, so she, he goes, oh, I'll be, I'll be great. I'd love to do it. So he comes over and he's, he's, and she's like, wait, 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 take a picture. So, so she, his wife is over there with her little old cans before digital cameras yeah, were yeah. common. She's just like that, yeah. you know, that little disposable. She has a disposable and she's like, hold the bottle and stand there. Right. And so he's got there with his, with his marker and, and I'm like, hey, so he's famous now. And he's like, oh, this is so great. I have fans. <laughs> a farmer in Scotland has fans. Uh, that's actually a good story. Isn't that fun? You know, once a year, you can pull one off. Uh, well, that took up most of this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right. Well, so wrapping up, the thing Let's that I find... Let's get some comments, though. The thing that I find interesting about the Glenmorangie is... Yes. These are... They are different, right? Mm -hmm. they, are, they have distinct flavors from one to another, but they are all absolutely Glenmorangie. Oh, there's no question. This is the same whiskey. Yeah. Now, actually, you know what's really cool about this? And you should do this. What's cool about this is to get to show how the same distillery and the same base whiskey can result in four such dramatically different flavors yeah. only based on how they're aging things. Yeah, yeah. That's a really great comparison. Everything from the I color, did this from the color to the nose to the flavors. I did this with my dad last week with the Grangestone Trio, mm -hmm. but Grangestone's not that good. Pew Heretic. Oh, this is great. Don't read the whole thing, but <clears throat> once you get the idea, you know well, what it's talking about. Just give me the part you want me to read. Well, there you go. You gave me like... You gotta get context. It's a whole paragraph. Pure Heretic is awesome, but he came up with this idea. We're totally gonna do it's it. It's a third of a page. It really is a third of a page. <laughs> I know this is a couple of weeks old, but I had to chime in. That uh -huh. video where Daniel just sat and drank his whiskey is such a great freaking idea. Why? Of course you would put this in here. No, 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 because he has a suggestion. That I... That I'd pay to watch each and every member of this royally f***ed up tribe sit on their own personal throne. Yes. their own chosen domain. Yes! <laughs> and fellowship with the rest of us as they drink their whiskey their way. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. You can stop there. Well, I said, now it gets to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alright. Now, well, now that you, you I don't want to talk about it anymore. We're getting to the important part. <laughs> Maybe Rex can lead us to an outlet where we can each send in our own vid. Yeah, alright. YouTube. So here's my thought. Anybody who hasn't seen the sit with me and drink for 45 minutes where I do nothing. It's really pretentious. It's, it's totally pretentious. <laughs> go, go watch it or you can see. But here's what you do. Shoot a video of you going for at least 30 minutes. Sure. At least 30 minutes drinking a whiskey of your choice sitting somewhere and just as if the camera is the rest of us, mm -hmm. put it on YouTube. We will create a playlist where our people can just watch, go through a playlist and drink with the tribe, even though we're scattered all over the place. Well, in short of that, if you don't want to sit for <laughs> half an hour silently, then send in a toast and we'll use it. At oh the yeah, yeah. Send episode. in a toast or send in a toast. We'll finish the videos with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Good idea. Pew, Aaron. Aaron H678. I purchased Centauri Hibiki 12 blend on my birthday. Monday just gone. Uh, for 100 pounds on Amazon. And they sell that on Amazon in the UK? Yeah, you can buy alcohol oh. in, the, in the Amazon in the UK. Come on, America. Like, yeah, really? freaking America and your blue laws. Alright. Uh, when I looked it up, it's now 240 pounds. Yeah. Uh, I heard it's been discontinued. I was just wondering if I should flip or drink. So, uh, this goes into the category of if you guys ever have questions about whiskey investing, I'm the wrong guy to talk to. Yeah. Because I believe in opening the whiskey and drinking the whiskey. Yeah, the $4,000 bottle is like two-thirds gone. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. So uh, I, I do agree that investing and reselling whiskey is a market and you can make money at it. But at that point, it just becomes a commodity like any other thing you could, you could turn and flip. And for me... Whiskey is an art, and it's meant to be consumed, and so we make money. We do. We make money other ways. This is what we do to enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah. We just enjoy that stuff. All right, Jim Weiss. Having only discovered your channel in the past forty-eight hours, I fear I feared I was not ready for this. On the other hand, not ready. 
On the other hand, I love double oaked Woodford more than some family members, so I was willing to give it a chance. <laughs> Glad I did. What is he talking about? Uh, so he just watched a video of, wood, of us reviewing the Woodford double oaked. Oh, okay. And he said, you know, I wasn't sure I was ready for this channel because it's so ridiculous. Oh. I and thought I'm he wasn't saying, ready for the whiskey. And I'm just saying, man, I don't think Rex and I are ready for this channel. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm still wearing a damn robe. My, my mom won't talk about it on Facebook because she doesn't want all of her family members <laughs> to know how just dumb <laughs> and amazing and amazing I am on this channel. All right. Well, on that note, we've got a long video today, so yeah, we do. Until tomorrow. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Look, do we have a cheers out? Sure. We'll put yeah, I'm sure we got a toast by. All right. We're well, shooting early. I'm sure we have a toast. That's right. Now. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. May you live to be a hundred years, with one extra year to repent. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.